name's Kev Ratcliffe. I'm 37 years old. I work in the logistics industry, uh, specifically as a HGV driver and an operations manager. Been in logistics now, getting on 15 years on and off. Maybe you come across stuff that we've done in the past. I used to work on Goodwood Festival of Speed and the Revival, laying all the temporary roadways, so that lovely shiny metal stuff you walk on. Good chance it was that I, uh, I was the one laying that. My passion about cars, I wasn't really massively into cars as a little boy. I, I'd watched the F1 and things and the touring cars. It really came about when I could drive. Um, now during that era, for us young lads, it was the Max Power era. So it was wild body kits, old Vauxhall Novas, 205 GTIs. And I think, I think the interest and the passion came from like-minded people coming together you know, all having a common interest, you know, great bunch of people, great times. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much where my me, where me passion for cars stemmed from. The car on the wall, the poster car, if you like, that would have been uh, an Escort Cosworth. What wasn't to like about them, they were Larry, you know, they were the stereotypical Essex boys car. I was fortunate to own one. Um, some many years ago, only briefly, but um, that was certainly a car that sort of pulled me more into the scene, you know, from the rallying heritage and just seeing these things rolling down the street, you know, it was before Mitsubishi Evos and Scoobies were really about, the car was the Escort Cosworth. So yeah, that was the car on the wall, you know, that was the one that really pulled me into my interests and passions. My earliest car memory will have been sat, probably in the back of my mum's, bright yellow Fiesta, popular plus, turning into our house. I remember, it's just a memory that I remember quite vividly, thinking that it was like the banana mobile, you know, the old banana man thing, because it was bright yellow, this thing. Um, but like, I don't really come from a background of a lot of money and things. So to us, the car was wow, it was brilliant, you know. We didn't have to rely on public transport and stuff. So that's probably my earliest memory because we were quite fortunate to, to even have a car. To get here today, to be here at Porsche Chester, buying what is, I'd say, one of my dream cars, first and foremost is determination, grit, and nothing short of hard work. I've come from literally nothing, where people wrote me off, said that I wouldn't really ever amount to anything, and I wouldn't I just decided that that wasn't going to be me. So I've earned, I've earned my stripes. I've been a driver's mate. I've sat back and took uh, like a sponge information, other people's experiences. And then I've, you know, I've been fortunate with certain situations and opportunities that have arose, but I put myself in a position to get there. Now, I work in logistics. And at the moment, it is a very attractive industry to work in. It's a hard industry to work in. It's not easy, it's long hours. Seeing something, being adamant that one day you're gonna position yourself to buy a GT3 and not letting go of that focus and not wanting to give in and go, you know what, maybe that was just something that's a little bit too far, just a little bit out of my reach. I've stayed focused. Do as I do, just work hard. You can achieve anything you want. The motto I live by is very simple. Work hard, play hard. If you want anything in life, nobody's gonna just drop it in your lap. Not unless you're fortunate to win the lottery. Come on tonight. If you want something, you can go and get it. 
Don't let anybody tell you you can't. I'm, I'm not special. I'm not sat here with degrees coming out of my ears. I'm not sat in an ivory tower. You know, I'm not in that fortunate position where I can just cream off other people's hard work. But I'm here as a working class man that's, that's grafted and that's basically live by the motto, work hard, play hard, and I certainly intend to play hard. I think when I get it home and I put it in the garage and I'm like, that is going to be there every time I open that garage door now and not just sort of looking at it on my phone. It, it's surreal because I almost think cars like this, probably cars that should be out of reach for people like me, but if you want something enough, doesn't matter what you do in life, you'll find a way of making it happen and that's what I've done with this. So what, what drew me into a Porsche 911 GT3? Now this is very simple answer for me. Um, I touched on earlier, I used to work on Goodwood Festival of Speed. I think it was 2014 or maybe 2015, Porsche actually launched the GT3 RS at Goodwood Festival of Speed. And we just happened to be there when they rolled it out of the, um, the lorry, the delivery vehicle. And to say I was sort of a bit starstruck would be an understatement. Just the lines, the just sheer aggressiveness looking at the car, the rawness, you know, whilst we weren't obviously allowed to sit in it, you know, they, they showed us around it, they started it, and it was just like, this is something special. This is a proper car. At that time, I think I had a Mitsubishi Evo at the time, and you know, I thought that was great, but. A GT Porsche, come on, let's, let's be honest, that puts things into perspective a little bit. And yeah, that, that for me really sort of cemented, there's a car that I want to own one day. And just kept working and now here we are. So if an eight year old Kevin came to me today, I'll be honest, I had to ask my son, what, what he would say if I owned a GT3 Porsche. We had a little look. The reaction was, wow, oh my God. You know, we really got a car like that. Um, my son's a bit like me, he's very humble. He understands that we can't have everything we want in life. And I think he'd be a little bit shocked, surprised and excited all in one measure. Um, but we'll find out later on because he's got no idea what's, what he's gonna come home to school to. First off, before I get into what makes them special, I've got to thank them because what they've done for me is go way above and beyond what I think anyone can expect from um, a company that's basically funding your car. So JBR for me, when I basically saw the car that I've been fortunate enough to buy, there was a massive doubt in my mind that I could even make it happen. Unfortunately, I've been a victim of fraud in the past, which has left a little bit of a checkered history on the old credit report. And obviously, if you go to a sort of mainstream lender, an algorithm basically says no. And to be honest, I actually found JBR just by browsing the internet and read a few reviews, hit up their social media, had a good look through, and there did seem to be um, like quite a wide variety of people that they helped, and I thought, you know what, maybe they can help me. Now, when I first spoke to Furkan, he's the, the guy that obviously dealt with this, I wasn't aware that they were actually a lender, I thought they were a broker. So when I spoke with Furkan, I was actually quite surprised, and I thought, hang on a minute, I'm actually talking to somebody here who might ultimately be making a decision. So maybe I can explain my situation. And literally from that first phone call, even that no decisions had been made, and I hadn't even made the decision at that point whether I wanted to proceed, I felt like a customer. There was almost like, like an arm put around me as though we will do everything we can to try and get this over the line for you. I almost felt part of a family. And 
literally from that first phone call, everything from that point was always in a positive mood. And it was, you know, we, we think we can help you. We think, you know, we think there is something we can do for you. I came away thinking, you know what, there's always a little scepticism, but there's a good chance this might actually come off because other people had turned the back on me, I'd approached other companies and I didn't fit what they considered, you know, their client profile. With JBR I didn't feel that. There was no sort of categorisation. It was, you're a human being, we're going, we're going to assess you as a person, not just what a piece of paper tells us about you. And I'll never forget the day when uh, I got the call off Furcan. It had been one of those days, everything had gone wrong. It was teeming down with rain and I got uh, an email, can you give me a call? And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. Let's just compound the week. Unfortunately, we can't do anything. He asked me how I was, how's your day been? I said, I've been, I had better days, but go on, hit me with it. And he said, oh, you know, um, I've got some good news. We're, we're, we're good to go, we're, we, can, we can help you out. And I think, the jubilation was just something else. You know, basically that big cloud that had been over the day, with the rain and everything, excuse the pun, it just cleared and it was just like, wow, this is actually going to happen. Everything's been seamless. I've been treated better than I could have imagined, really. I'm not just a statistic. I feel like I'm a valued customer. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned now, my business is, is your business. and. Any future cars will be purchased with the help of JBR.